She's the leader of the team. It's it's really great to see this team come together and get this response. It's great to see Nicole May get the start here. And the first pitch in Love's Field is a swing and a miss. Allie Cummins, catcher for the Red Hawks. This is a team that has played Oklahoma in obviously many big games on many big stages. But it does feel like that the blood's pumping a little extra today. <laughs> Everybody is excited and maybe a little nervous today. Including us in the booth. <laughs> a ball and a strike to Cummins. The starting order here for Miami just between the starting four, the top four in this one through nine. Got over 20 home runs. It's a lot of pop. Yeah, Miami has played three fewer games than Oklahoma, but they have hit 12 more home runs. They got some power as the count evens at two and two. If you look at their scores from their games, they're beating their opponents by nine, ten runs a game. They have a lot of pop. They've been able to see some really good pitching, so it be good. Good look here. The count runs full to the Miami leadoff hitter, Allie Cummins. Nicole May, a perfect 5-0 on the year, ERA south of one. She'll go down as history as the first starting pitcher ever at Love's Field. And the payoff is fouled back. We'll do it again. She's an arm that's going to hammer the strike zone. 28 Ks so far on the season has only walked eight. That's a ratio that I know this program looks at when it comes to an arm. But she's competitive. She's going to stay in the K zone. It's a leadoff walk. Got to calm the heart rate down just a little bit right now. <laughs> Everybody's looking around. I'm sure we'll show you the scoreboard in center field here in a little bit. It's hard not to stare at that. Everybody's <laughs> trying to figure out where the concession stands now. Uh, beautiful. This place, the bells and the whistles. Here's the right fielder, Jenna Golembeski, and a called strike. Uh, to that point, we got to talk with Coach Gasso earlier this week, and she was saying, they haven't seen the fields at all until today. These fans and this team got to see it all at the same time. It, <laughs> it's incredible to think, I don't know if I were playing, I would be so excited, so amped up. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I have to play a softball game on top of that. Not an exaggeration. This team took the field for pregame warmups, what, about an hour ago? It's the <laughs> first time they have ever stepped on the playing surface here. The 0-2, a little bit high. It's an interesting uh, contrast because for this team, and this is what I got a chance to talk to Coach about, this is almost being treated like an away game. This is a team that's prepping to be on a surface for the very first time like they would if they're traveling somewhere. Yet it's their home turf, their new home turf, with a home crowd and a home atmosphere. It's just, it would be a little bit out of body, I think, for me. Kinsey Hansen was talking last night. They've got to learn how everything works here. How's the ball come off the backstop for a catcher? What are the ricochets like in the outfield? What are the wind tunnels like here? Swing and a miss. There's your first strikeout. One away. It's the response you want, right? <laughs> a leadoff walk, a rare walk, only her ninth of the season for Nicole May. And what's the response you get out of the senior? A strikeout. A beautifully dropped curveball or screwball right in on the knees. Drops the barrel underneath that pitch. That's where she gets the most swing throughs. 90% of her swing and misses are right at the knees. Carly Spade now, first pitch swinging, lifts one into right center field, and it's a home run. The ninth of the season for Carly Spade, and it's 2 nothing Miami. We talked about the power from Spade, and it looks like the first home run ever on Love's Field is going to come from Miami, Ohio. We talked about their power, and that's how they get the most of their at-bats. They get the most of their runs with that long ball early on in that lineup, and that one just 
left over the plate, waist high. They're going to take advantage of every missed pitch. That one sent pretty well over that fence. Ninth home run of the season for Spade. Holly Blaska, first baseman. Strike called. There's a footnote in the record books. You mentioned it, Nicole. We'll look back years from now and say, Carly Spade, Carly <laughs> Spade. Third baseman of Miami of Ohio had the first home run here. Ball and a strike to count. This is a team that's been asking for more pressure, for more accountability in practice the past week. That was interesting in talking to Coach Gasso after they come back from the Mary Nutter. Lifted into right, that's deep. Pickering back to the wall and it's back to back home runs. Holly Blaska makes it three nothing Miami. It was actually hit right into the Miami fan section. Talk about perfect placement right there. They are hyped in this dugout. Another one left over the heart of the plate. This is almost the identical pitch as before. She just gets the contact. She doesn't need to do too much extension. It's right there. And we're figuring out these wind tunnels pretty quickly. Yeah, we can confirm the ball flies. <laughs> I think, too, just looking at these locations, right, of where these home runs are going. These are elevated pitches. They're not competitive low in the zone. I mean, take a look at where this lands. This is belt high down Broadway. It's just too sweet against a team that swings with the power that they've shown all season. You can't leave it over the plate that sweet. Strike called, Sammy Buick. The DP, freshman out of McMurray, Pennsylvania. Talk about the pressure, though, Nicole. This this is a team that's asking for more in practice. They had a very good outing at Mary Nutter. Coach was pleased with what they came out and showed in California. It looked good. Offense looked good. But she said, I, I still think that this team is craving more. They're craving pressure. They want to be held accountable. And she said, in this day and age where we are in our sport, most of the teams and most of the athletes are wanting less. They want less pressure, but not this squad. They want to be held accountable. They want the challenge. I'd say they've got themselves a challenge here early in this ball game. To that point, you think about the senior class, they don't know what it's like to lose the last game of their season, yeah. ever in their career. Grounded to third, Brito will throw across and there's two away. It's the first change up we've seen out of the hand of May. And if she's able to get ahead and count, she's just going to start to go to that pitch. I think that that's the key for her is to hammer the zone early so that she can start to show some of her tools. This is what she's facing. I mean, this is the D1 rank. Runs per game, home runs per game. This is big time. Reagan Bartholomew, the shortstop, comes up empty. Right-handed hitter out of Waukee, Iowa. Ball and a strike. Everything, like how are the shadows, where are they going to fall? Mm -hmm. we got a new overhang, obviously, in this new stadium. How do they progress? we got two games here today. Sun came out today. we got a little sun ball working in the outfield. Yeah, that didn't happen very long ago. It was... Quite chilly here early during the ribbon cutting ceremony, but it's supposed to get as you see the blue sky above and that state of Oklahoma scoreboard in center field that's unmistakable. It's going to get warmer and warmer as this day goes, as it goes along. Got her swinging. Top of the first comes to an end, but Miami came to play. A lot of fanfare here today, but the first two blows belong to the Red Hawks. Sooners ding Miami of Ohio. A little bit later on, it'll be the Liberty Flames here. And Miami has struck first. Back-to-back -back first inning home runs.
has them up 3-0 on the champs. Jada Coleman leading off for OU. And a strike is called. Addy Jarvis, the starting pitcher for Miami today. Talking about her a little bit before this game and what she throws. She's going to throw a lot of pitches inside to lefties, outside to righties. And that's pretty much where she lives. She likes to jam those lefties. And then with the righties, she's continuing to work on the plate and then a little bit farther, a little bit farther out. That's her game plan. That's her go-to. But against Oklahoma and their offense, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see just a couple of surprises. Here's the lineup. Patty Gasso will roll out today for Oklahoma. Coleman Pickering, the freshman, leading them at a 471 batting average. Brito, Jennings, Parker, Boone, Hanson, Torres, and Sanders. The one-two again outside. Best table setter in America right here, Jada Coleman, senior out of the colony. There you see Addie Jarvis's numbers, a perfect 4-0. Down the left field line, it is fair into the corner. Coleman off to the races. She'll stop at second with a leadoff double. I love that reaction automatically from Oklahoma. They're down two to nothing, gave up some big hits, kind of might feel deflating in this big moment. And they say, you know what? It's not about the new stadium anymore. It's about playing this game, playing our game. And Jada Coleman, in her fashion, gets a double down the line to start Oklahoma off. Banks with the diving effort and left. Nothing else you could really do there, even if you stay on the feet. You've got the speed of Coleman at the leadoff position. Toby, you said it, one of the best, if not the best leadoffs in the U.S. Gets the job done. We've seen her move around the lineup. We've seen her in the sixth hole. We've seen her kind of bounce around in this order. In a team full of veterans, here's one of the big stories early in the year for OU. True freshman Cassidy Pickering, right fielder, leading the team and hitting with a 471 batting average. is a kid that Rich Gasso talked a lot in depth to us on the phone before this weekend about how pleased she is with the freshman class, specifically this bat. Just fearlessness. You come in here, you've got seven returning super seniors. You got 10 total that'll be graduating this year. And a freshman class that said, I don't care. Give me a bat. I want to play. Give me an opportunity. Full count, her first ever collegian at bat in Mexico. Grand slam. There's a good <laughs> how do you do, huh? I remember seeing that and I was like, man, she, here, we, here we go. She's going to be a good one. Fouls the 3 2 down the left field line out of play. I can remember what that was like my freshman season. Toby, you probably remember this. 2013, we had an entire starting lineup come back that played for a national championship the year before. Yeah, it's like, I can it's remember that too. <laughs> you're walk, yeah, you're walking into a lion's den, right? And this freshman class stepped in a very similar experience. You mentioned, Nicole, a senior class that doesn't know what it's like to lose the last game. That can be so intimidating. And the hunger, the want for more accountability, harder practices raising the standard, making the team level up. You're going into all that as a freshman, and you're just arms wide open saying, I, I love it. First two have reached, Alyssa Brito. Here's one of the seniors right here. First team All-American a year ago, third baseman. And she's ahead in the count. The R.A. Jennings on deck. Sooners trying to punch back after a three-run top of the first inning from Miami. This is a great match for Brito. She actually has her strongest contact on the outside part of the plate. 
So this is a really good matchup as far as Jarvis and Brito go. I think that this is gonna be in her power alley as a three hole. Off the fist, that's gonna drop in, base hit. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. She fought it off the fist into right field. You mentioned surprises, right, Nicole? I think we saw <laughs> one here. I don't know if this was a miss or if this was planned, but knowing the scouting of Brito being strong on the outer corner, Jarvis actually challenged her hands, but the strength of that lower, lower grip, she's able to punch this one through into no man's land right in front of Gobaleski. I don't know she was peppering that inside half. Didn't always get the strike on that inside half, but that's where she stayed. And to that point, okay, she's really good on that outside half. Let's let's switch it up. Let's go inside. But knowing as a pitcher, just because you throw to maybe not the strength of the hitter, if you stay there too long, the hitter will adjust. They'll so feel you going back there, back there, back there. They'll adjust. They'll change where their eyes are looking. T.R.A. Jennings, strike one, called 73 career homers, number three in OU history. She had nine runs batted in in Palm Springs last weekend. Trying to drive in the first ever OU runs at Love's Field. And she pops it up. Playable. Foul territory, third base side. Carly Spade, one out. It's a big out. That is a huge out. Base is loaded. Wow. Tiari Jennings comes up. You, as a defense, as an outfield, you take a couple steps back. You have to respect the power that she has at the plate, but also talk about great freshmen. Ella Parker steps up to the plate, and she's one of those that Coach Gassup talked about in depth of she came knowing the strike zone. She came eager for the challenge. She came ready for it. And this is just personal bias, but they're both lefties, so I, I like that part just a little bit. <laughs> Freshman out of L.A. Bases loaded one away now. And now two balls and no strikes. Yeah, Ella Parker is all pull, baby. That's her power alley. She'll stay on the pull side of the field. We'll have to see this ball deep in the stance. Right there, it's all timing. It's all timing. This is maybe where some of the freshmen, the newbie mentality can start to kind of peek through. You want to see the patience right here, a bases loaded opportunity. Center field. Going to stay in the park. Tagging at third and scoring is Coleman. It's an RBI for Parker and it's three to one. Ella Parker is in the history books. And they're both having a word for Riley Boone. And that's another thing <laughs> that is on the inside half. We talked about Jarvis and how she likes to pepper that inside half to lefties. Well, she's going to get a lot of lefty action in that lineup. She's already. This is her fourth lefty that she's faced. She's facing a lot of those. I know one thing about this Oklahoma lineup. They like that inside pitch. They like to turn and burn on those. So gonna see maybe some off speeds, that outer half to mix things up. Outside corner, 0-2 to the pride of Owasso, Riley Boone. 441 batting average on the year. She's tearing it up early in the season. Jarvis tried to get her to chase there. Sixth year senior, Addie Jarvis in the circle. Got the call outside corner. And Jarvis, after loading the bases with nobody out, gives up minimal damage. We head to the second at Norman. 3 1 Miami in front on opening day. What you do, play the game. You're Miami, Ohio. I mean, I love the way they started out, but just knowing the type of pitchers that you have and the type of staff Oklahoma has, you have to go into this game feeling, being willing to pivot quickly and make adjustments in at-bats, player to player. 
defensively, it, it needs to happen quickly. And I mean, they did a great job yeah. jumping out that first inning. Give them credit. The Miami softball stadium seats 500. Uh -huh. They've walked into this place today. Swing and a miss. That's a third strikeout for Nicole May. And they punched the champs in the mouth in the top of the first inning. This is the hard part of being the number one team in the nation. You've got a huge target on your back. And anytime someone especially is walking into your home house, they're going to take their best punch. Kate hey, Kobayashi hit by a pitch. So a one out base runner for the Red Hawks. Second three base runner allowed by May today. This is, I think this one just gets away from her. Uh, talked about her wanting to go for that low screwball that goes in at the knees. I think that's the pitch that she was trying to go for, get that swing and miss. That arm just tails away. That'll bring up nine hole hitter, second baseman Chloe Parks. true always whenever you're starting a game the first two innings those are the tone setters yeah things settle in but if you think of it like like a boxing match if you're able to come out hard swinging land a couple punches that might save you later on down the road and Miami Ohio said all right let's land some punches hard early on grind the rest of the game but get it going early let's be honest three runs against a team like Oklahoma is not enough. <laughs> so Miami's going to have to continue to apply pressure. We got a lot of ball game left. There's a lot of arms in the tank that OU can go to. I think that May is just starting to settle in. There's a lot going on. A lot of electricity in the air. You're saying it's not over yet. It ain't over. Okay. All right. Well, that gives us hope. It's not You're over in the six, second no inning. Two balls and a strike. Parks out of Indianapolis. Toby, what does this feel like for you? I've called a lot of Oklahoma sports. You've, been in, a, you've it, been in a lot of environments. It's electric. Uh, you know, we've been here, I've been here for several hours for the ribbon cutting ceremony and seeing the excitement, and the line of fans. Everybody, including the team, the broadcasters, getting their first look at this place after it's been anticipated forever. It was very much like an open house when the doors open. Everybody's walking all around, looking at everything, looking at the different angles, trying to figure out if they like the seats they bought, you know. <laughs> and uh, checking out the scoreboard. You've seen some of the pictures, but very little. Um, it's just awfully cool and so deserved. Pitches outside, that's a walk, two on. Oh, Nicole May is struggling to kind of settle in here early. This is rare for her. I mean, she walked into today with only eight walks on the season in 21 innings, and we've already seen two through an inning and a third. We see Jen Rocha hop out of the dugout for a word. This is uncharacteristic for her. Absolutely, and I mean, I, it's the elephant in the room, the nerves, the energy, her last first home game, her last first time in the new stadium. And sometimes it's hard to drown out that noise, especially whenever it's this loud with a lot more than they're used to playing in front of a home crowd. And I think Rocha just coming out, talking to her pitcher, talking to her catcher, getting them resettled, getting them refocused. I think being able to find the strike zone for May has been a little bit of a struggle. She's getting behind, she'll get ahead and then she'll fall behind two balls in a row quickly, pretty often. And so battling back out of that hole, it can be difficult for a pitcher. So coming back, talking to Hanson, talking to May and saying, let's find that strike zone, but let's convert and get that second strike right away. Put them on the ropes instead of yourself. Nicole May notoriously misses competitively. And what I mean by that is when she throws a ball, it's it's typically pretty close. It's typically pretty competitive. Back to the top of the order. First pitch misses to Allie Cummins. 
This feels big, though. It does. It feels big early. I also, I don't know if you guys feel this way. It feels like things are moving fast. Like, the pace for Nicole is just urgent. And I wonder if right there, the message from Jin Rocha, pitching coach here at Oklahoma, is just to slow down. Take a breath. There's a strike. You mentioned three runs might not be enough. It does, though, match already the most runs OU has given up in a game this year. And Miami threatening again here in the second, two on, one out. One and two. Got her. Two outs. Fourth strikeout for May. That was big. This is the start of the second time through the lineup. Starting the game off with a walk, and then the next time you face that batter, getting the K in a big time situation, getting to two outs. It's a great response from the senior. Golombeski now, strikeout victim in the first. First pitch swinging, popped into right. Pickering's there, side retired. Whatever Jen Rocha said, it worked. The Cole Bay strands a pair. We head to the bottom of two. 3 1 Miami in front. Opening day at Love's Field. Security for this Oklahoma softball team trying to battle from behind today. Bottom of the order, starting with Kinsey Hansen, the catcher. The captain, one of the two captains on this team, takes a changeup for strike one. Three home runs on the year, the 2023 Johnny Bench Award winner. 49 career homers and some dramatic ones in big moments in her career. All the fellow captains on this team, Kinsey Hansen and Tiara Jennings, have the C on the chest this season. Two and one. Talked about it moving fast. Everything was a little chaotic. You can feel things slow down when Kenzie Hansen steps into the box. You feel her confidence. You feel her intentionality every step, right? And it makes you, my heart rate slowed down. Her heart rate slows down. Just gives everybody that extra breath. Full count. This is an athlete that constantly has her finger on the pace and the pulse of this game as a catcher. Right, being behind the dish, by default, she's got a leadership perspective on this field. Slow roller back to the mound. Nice play by Jarvis for out number one. That'll bring Alina Torres to the plate. Okay, we need to talk about this because never, ever, ever in the history of OU softball have they had walk-up songs. They have them this year. Aaron, how do you feel about that? I remember I begging. I feel proud. <laughs> Isn't that how a parent should feel? Like Is when their kid has more than for? what they had? Oh, this I beg. This is something you wanted and didn't get. Toby, we... <laughs> they, she dangled, I think it was like, what, we had to have a 3.5 GPA as a team <laughs> to get walk-up Team song. GPA, individual GPA. Fly ball, center field, Kobayashi, two outs. So what would have been your walk-up songs? That's the thing, I never thought about it because we never had them. I may shock you with this answer. <laughs> And this is this is gonna show my love and my my musical connection with my father in classic rock. Oh, wow. Mine would be the guitar riff <laughs> intro of Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress. Wow. wow. I love that. That would be my walk-up. Very specific. I Very. like it, yeah. Two outs, nobody on for Sid Sanders. What about you, Nicole? You know, I don't know. I'm I'm a lover of all music. I can't just pick one. 
Okay, Toby. So I think it's good that I did. To be fair, Nicole was telling me before the game she would have picked Beyonce's new country song. <laughs> Texas Hold'em? Texas Hold'em for her walk up. The same oh. Texas. A little bit high, two and one. I would have uh, chosen the theme from Hoosiers. Okay. Yeah. Emotional. Yes. Greatest movie of all time. Of all time. <laughs> He was trying to ignite a two-out rally here in the second. And it's a 3-1 count to Sanders. Top of the order, Jada Coleman on deck. I wonder what finally caused Patty to cave on the walk-up song. You know how much has changed over the past decade with Coach Gasso? She a lot. She softened a bit. <laughs> a lot. A lot. In the best way, though. In the be you have to. That's what makes her the best one of the best coach. I say the best. In the nation. She pivots. She evolves. She's a Hall of Fame coach for a reason. She's adapted to the times. But she has held true to her core in some of her traditional ways. In the blue, blue collar work ethic. The way she grinds this team and prepares them for the season. But... Walk-up songs are a nice little change. Hey. You're no not changing your no diet, harm, right? No harm, right? Yeah, so seeking win number 1,471 today. Coleman doubled to start the bottom of the first. She has scored the only sooner run today. Jarvis struggling to find the strike zone here a bit. This defense definitely remembers what she did. This outfield, they are deep right now. Couple steps from the warning track. Middle is pretty deep as well. Three and oh. Pickering on deck. And it's back-to-back -back walks. Saw Oklahoma last inning threatened. Had bases loaded. A lot of potential. T.R. Jennings was up. He only walked away with one run on a sack fly. Kind of thinks that JT talking to them, they themselves talk about accountability, knowing, okay, we needed to get a couple more across the board. We had less than two. Only get one kind of feels like a wasted opportunity. Let's make the most of it. Let's let's be disciplined at the plate. Let's zone in, make her throw to our game plan instead of just going after whatever she's throwing, going after and letting the emotion take over. But I mean, it's the first inning. Everybody's settled, nerves are settled. Got to see him before the game. He was there before the whole team was, and he only wanted to dug out. Just kind of looking out at the field. It's like, man, this is crazy. Now to be associate here. head coach. <laughs> well deserved your title. Yeah. All right, Pickering now. Extremely. Who put the Sooners in front with a swing of the bat. Two on, two out, takes a called strike. Pickering walked in the first. Popped up, foul territory. Spade drifting back toward Fair. And Jarvis gets out of a jam again. We head to the third and Norman still three. And Carly Spade, who hit a two run home run in the first, leads off. First pitch swinging up the middle. Jennings, one out. One pitch, one out. Been a bit of a bumpy ride for Nicole May so far. But what's your evaluation thus far, Aaron, on Nicole's day? I think you said it. It's been a little bumpy. Um, just trying to settle into this atmosphere early. A lot of newness, a lot of nerves. I think that the, the moment can feel really big. I actually like this challenge for her. I think that this team and this staff Specifically, this pitching staff has been so good so early and so consistently since the season started. The getting challenge is a good thing. You, were, you would hear it from Coach Gasso herself. They, they learned the most 
from a loss. They learn the most from an inning like inning one, right? Coming out and getting a huge punch right in the gut. Three runs scored, two home runs. I can promise you, Nicole May is learning right now. Even as a senior, a constant student of this game. Holly Blasco also homered back in the first inning, her fifth of the season. One ball and one strike. Little bit outside. Crowd disagreed with that one. It's good to know the rowdy and loud crowds haven't changed yeah. despite the new stadium. Same fans, just more of them. <laughs> good Swing for Oklahoma, else. bad for everyone else. The comparison, by the way, Marita Hines, their official capacity, 1,378. That's the old stadium. 1,378 for that. This place seats 4,200, according to the fire marshal, anyway. It could fit more than that in here with standing room only. And there are several great standing room areas, and, and they are loaded today. We have to have somewhere in the 5,000 neighborhood here. Full count to Blaska. We'll do it again. The footprint of Marita Hines Field, just over 15,000 square feet. The footprint of Love's Field, 44,000 square feet. And it's a walk. Aaron, you talked about earlier pitch that Nicole May throws a change of beautiful, got to swing and miss. But whenever Nicole May throws her best game, it doesn't matter what count it is, she's able to be effective with that off speed. And I don't think we've seen it a lot today. And it, I feel like that absence of that pitch, you feel it in her pitches. You feel it with her movement. You see Jen Rocha come out and talk to her. There is activity in the Sooner bullpen. We've only seen her start off an at bat with an off speed once through two innings and a third. I agree with you. I think that's one of her best pitches. And this this point in our game, where we are in the season, early but still enough reps under the belt, that pitch should be a little bit more prevalent. Be able to throw it early, be able to throw it often, especially if that screwball isn't exactly where you want it to be. Again, what I'm seeing right now from Nicole May is just the competitive misses aren't there. When she misses, she's missing big. She's not getting the bites. She's not setting herself up to throw pitchers' pitches, and that's the difference. There you see Carly Keeney beginning to warm up for OU. Three walks, four strikeouts for May. One out deep in the third. Sammy Buick now. Buick grounded out to third, her first at bat. Third game ever between OU and Miami. Series even at one apiece. Their first matchup was back in 1992. Miami won that one. And then last year they played up in Ohio. The Sooners beat them 13 to one in six innings. This is the first of five games this weekend for the Sooners here. Two today, two tomorrow, one on Sunday. Not all against Miami. I was just about to say, I am <laughs> shocked we haven't seen Kinsey Hansen throw down to first base. The aggressive jumps we're seeing off first by Miami, Ohio is, I'm scared for them, to be honest. About six steps off. Whoa. Inside corner called strike. If we were watching Nicole May have a little bit sharper of a day in the circle, I think we maybe could see a pitch out for a pick at first, but we just can't take that risk right now. That's not something that Kinsey Hansen maybe feels comfortable doing at this moment. Strikeout number five. 
just talked about that changeup. That was that pitch right there. Just enough speed taken off. And that swing is just right on top of it. A little bit of a drop at the end. All the best changeups typically do. Reagan Bartholomew now. Runner goes. And it's a stolen base. And what's the call here? It's an out. She leave early? Indeed. Third out of the inning. So a base running error leads to the third out of the frame. Still 3-1 our score here in Norman. Opening day at Love's Field. Sooners at bat next. Oh, and uh, Patty and I have a mutual friend, and so and so Coach asked me to come out and talk with the team, and I did that. And so after after when I left after that, um, I thought it was really so amazing how much alignment uh, Loves has with what Coach Gasso, how she runs her team. And so it was really from that, and then a, a conversation with a couple of people in my family, knowing that this. Oh, you wanted to build a facility of this scale. And so one thing led to another. We made the decision, and um, here we are. Janine, I know just the, the background that you've had um, in your industry, the impact you've had on empowering women, not only in sports, but in their professional lives and their personal lives. That's a huge thread that connects this team. And I know that that's something that you and Coach Gasso have connected deeply on. Yeah. What else are you guys involved in? What else is loved, loves involved in as far as empowering women? We have from a from a nonprofit, and we give to um, a lot of different organizations. Um, we are really we've got a women's ERG at our uh, as part of our organization, and so we really want to put women in uh, positions where they can learn from each other and be able to uh, serve serve each other and be able to uh, promote up. And so there's a lot of different things that we ways that we utilize talent to be able to bring up um, other talent. Um, women talent in the organization and so it's really something that we focus on um, and it's a lot of different aspects to it to enable uh, women in our organization to be able to realize their potential. It's huge. Melissa Brito lead off single into center field. Hit number three for Oklahoma. Do you like how it turned out? Yeah, Do you like it's the place? really, really amazing. Yeah, yeah, they were. We knew that that a lot of this was going to be in the works, but really seeing that there's a few elements that were, uh, I didn't really know it were going to turn out as as nice as they are. And I think it's really a stadium that's really fit for a, the number one team in the nation. Do you have a favorite bell or whistle of of everything? I'm sure you. Well, I haven't seen. I have seen everything. I would have to say the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's my favorite. Part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love the state of Oklahoma. The love's feeling up at the top. The hearts. It yeah. does feel like the heart of this program. Now in the heart of our state. <laughs> on the heart of, not far Come from on. the heart of the highway. Hello. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. We know how to do this plug thing. <laughs> there it is. It did show up well, didn't it? It's so good. Swing and a miss by Jennings. 3-1 Miami lead. Sooners trying to even things up or more here in the bottom of the third inning. It's fitting. This is the first day of Women's History Month. Could be two. And it is. It's a double play. Bartholomew to Blaska. Well done. We've seen some good sound defense from Miami, Ohio. They haven't wavered under this crowd. They haven't wavered under the pressure. Ginny Love Meyer in the booth with us as Ella Parker steps in. I'm uh, I work with Gabe with Eichert on the uh, on the crew, and I know oh, yeah. how much uh, the OU softball program means to your your whole family. I mean, whether it's NCAA tournament time or whatever the case may be. You guys absolutely love this program. I mean, obviously because of Love's Field, but just whether you're at the games or at the NCAA tournament, it's been a big part of your lives. Yeah, Toby, it's really been something that from my parents, and my, we lost my dad last year. My mom still watches the games and um, has, has met Coach Gasso two, 
even the little little. So I've got grandnephews who've been at literally been at the World Series game and yeah. little Cam has this little headphones on and um, <laughs> it has been so much fun just because all of us and there's a lot of us in the family are really behind the OU softball and really just just seeing the excitement from all, from everybody just makes this even more special. That's so cool. 2-0 pitch is inside to Parker. Parker has the RBI for OU today. A sacrifice fly back in the first. And she takes a strike. Well, we need a, we need a dramatic opening day rally now in this one. It fell behind it's early, but... That I, sets us up for a fun finish. No, today. that's exactly right. And I think they're very capable of it. Ground ball to second. That'll be the final out here in the bottom of the third. Jenny, thank you for joining us okay. in the booth. Thank you for this beautiful stadium. Thanks so much, Toby. Glad to do it. Thank you so Jenny much. Jenny Love Meyer. We hit two homers. They went back to back in the first to give them the three nothing lead. That's Spade and Blaska. Nicole May. Able to settle in in the third. Got the strikeout to end the inning. She'll start the fourth against Reagan Bartholomew. Now five strikeouts, three walks on the day for May. And delivers a first pitch strike here. And what a thrill it is now to be joined by the athletic director here at the University of Oklahoma, Joe Castiglione, on this historic day. Hi, Joe. Toby, good to see you. You're everywhere. You're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we're going to be everywhere for a while. That's We've right. got quite a bit going on this weekend. What do you think, Joe? Well, I've been asked that a lot. And obviously, there's uh, immense excitement, pride, uh, and really just uh, validation that great things happen when you get all the right people working together for common good. And uh, But I, in a way, I... I'm not sure I can answer the question with the, the kind of emotion that I think is existing in me because all we've been worried about is, gosh, we got to get this stuff done. And went over here this morning and like, you're not done. Let's go. We got to get this going. They Clean were putting up. seats in, what, 90 minutes before yeah. uh, first pitch today? Yeah, so that, that part just, you know, we were so keyed up over that that uh, I'm sure it'll sink in more later on. But uh, just seeing everybody here, Watching the team come into the stadium for the first time, walk, you know, run out of the field to warm up for the first time, watching the fans walking through and looking and gazing at everything. The scoreboard turned on. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we, you can have these great creations, but if it doesn't turn on, not much going to be going for it. But uh, just right back to the circle. Just all of that working together, just watching everybody enjoy this. And there's only one first time, you know, so uh, it's a historic day. Have you found time to, in the midst of here, there, crazy, okay, power's working. Have you found a minute to just kind of let it sink in? Not really, not to yet. be candid, um, not really. There will be. I think uh, as we get into the season and you know, just uh, finish a few of the areas behind the scenes. Um, then, you know, I think maybe that'll sink in at that point. You know, we've really tried hard, and you know, we've talked about it before, but if you're asked what our motivation was, was to create a sense of pride in the facility and what the people here, when you bring everybody together, can do to elevate our program. And it really goes back to the players, you know, that uh, we always say this, that people come before, they create a legacy, they leave it better than they found it, the next person picks it up and takes it farther, and then you keep doing that, and you have the gold standard of college softball here at the University of Oklahoma. That's pretty special, and that's all we're doing, trying to find ways to help it continue to grow. We talked a little bit about, okay, we made these plans. Okay, Coach Castle, what do you think? Okay, Coach Rocha, how does this fit into the pitchers? Like, how, how did that conversation go? Um, great overall. <laughs> and I, I think back to some of the looks on their faces when we bring them into the conference room and we you know, have the drawings in front of them or on an easel or we're using, you know, a, uh, a video or something to describe what we're thinking. And, yeah, there were some moments like, oh, this is great. 
And then there were some moments where I was watching Patty's face, <laughs> and it was like, oh. I should like it. She doesn't have a good <laughs> poker face? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> the first time we mentioned the scoreboard in the shape of the state of Oklahoma, it was one of them. Well, I'm not sure how <laughs> well, about Patty, trust me, it'll be great. And then, of course, we brought more drawings and how it works. She was, oh, okay. And then when she came out and saw it constructed, she lit up. She goes, oh, this is legit. You know, so whew, I was glad that it worked out. Where she <laughs> you want her to be happy. happy. Yeah. Back, but, back. I mean, I think that's the most unique scoreboard ever. It looks great. It's, it's such a symbol. But we wanted it to, be, and at night when uh, you know all the regular lights are off and you know the people are just driving by normally, the state of Oklahoma is um, outlined in an LED light that's either white or crimson, and so we tried to create it so it creates a little bit of a glow, you know, into the stadium. Just enough to make people wonder. Ooh, I gotta get myself in that stadium. There's a lot. There's a lot to learn about this place. But one thing's already been. It's got the wow factor. If it's you're going rough. for wow factor, everybody walked in today and looked up. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. Erin knows this. Uh, she was still playing. We were talking about this with Coach Gasol that we wanted to. Once we realized we couldn't expand Maria Hines Field the way we wanted because the city is widening. Jenkins right here to the east of us. So the combination of the road being widened and the stadium growing to add more seats, it just put it on top of each other. So we started talking about a new stadium and uh, we kind of used the metaphor, make it like little Wrigley Field. You know, it's it's cause we were, you know, had to talk to the campus whether we could use this piece of land of the campus and um, Knowing the topography, it was going to have to sit down a little bit, and then we could build the stands up around it so you're feeling like you're looking down on the field a little bit more as opposed to just flat. And I think we got it right. Yeah. Outside, one of the things I like, and I don't know if our cameras can get a shot of it or not, but the scoreboards over the seating bowl that are hanging down from the rafters, that's got an old school kind of wriggly old Yankee Stadium feel to it. That's cool. In intentional okay. for that. And if you notice on the front, first of all, having uh, a cover over the seats is a big deal. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're thinking about the fans and all the amenities that we had for that. But if you look on the front, there's railing, that uh, ironwork, if you will. Yankee looks Stadium like, mess. Yes. And then there are flags for all the schools in the conference. And there are 16 because... Uh, Next it, year it will works. be a conference yeah. that has 16. <laughs> going to have to get <laughs> new flags here in a couple of months. Yeah. yeah, but there are 16 flat poles up there. One on, two outs. The one-two pitch to Parks. A little bit low. Runner goes. Kinsey Hansen, not in time. All right, this is all uh, good and well. The place is beautiful. We need, we need some runs, Joe. We, we got to win this thing. You have well, Jenny Love is warming in the pen. You know, <laughs> she, 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 threw, she threw a little bit what of a story change that up would be if she yes. comes in and gets the save today. Right. Huh? <laughs> well, Patty wants to talk. And they want to challenge the play at second. Have a, another day when we'll be able to show off more of the stadium and the finishes that are continuing to be completed over the next several weeks. Uh, but it was really important to be able to play our first game of our, our home season in this stadium rather than play some uh, play a few games at Marita Hines and then move over here to Love's Field. Um, we wanted to give our current team members you know, a good number, which will graduate um, the chance to play as many games in here as possible. Call stands on the challenge. Stolen base for Kobayashi. Two outs. Chloe parks the batter. Nine hole hitter here. 2-2 two, two count. And it's a full count. We're in the fourth. Miami leads the champs 3-1. to one, Trying to tack on another run here. Pulled foul. Anything that as you were building it, you were like, you, you started with this idea, 
and then it went in a different direction, and you're like, that worked out better than we could have imagined. There were several. Uh, actually, the basic design pretty much worked from the beginning, but we made tweaks along the way, obviously. The biggest one was adding the temporary seating out in the outfield. All four. The, uh, so the second the, level in, in yes. right and left is and we have, added. We're looking at ways to add even more. And so when we started the project, we knew what the the uh, demand for tickets were at that time. Not here, Aaron Miller. A really sticky spot. She's stepping into a little bit of a pressure situation. This is wide. This is an arm that utilizes and relies on the defense behind her. You're going to see a lot low in the zone. Drop screw arm. Paints the corners. Just a really good defensive pitcher. Strike call. Leadoff hitter Allie Cummins. A walk and a strikeout today. She's got Kobayashi at second. Parks at first with two away. Of course, the Sooners will be playing Liberty later on today here at Love's Field. There's another strike call. I'm sure it's a day full of all kinds of emotions for Carly Keeney. And the count of ball and two strikes. Pulled to third, backhand stab. Brito steps on the bag, and that's all they needed. And the inning is over. <laughs> Tried the double play. Might as well get four outs, right? <laughs> and they're out of that jam. That's zero percent of pitching production from a year ago. Jarvis so far has given up only one run to Oklahoma as we play in the fourth. Beautifully done. Riley Boone's aboard. Forget her speed. Talk about the element of surprise. Corners they weren't expecting at all. Flat footed. Ali Boone just puts it in no man's land. Just look, it's just enough to make the corners, the catcher, the pitcher all come out and converge. And it wasn't until they picked up the ball. Riley Boone was standing on first at that point. Talk about setting a tone, trying to get something going. Later in the game, you're in the bottom of the fourth. It's time for a rally if you're Oklahoma. You're down by two. Kinsey Hansen, 0 for 1 today. It's a ball outside. Yeah, you can kind of feel it, can't you? Like, uh, this is all fun and games. Everybody loves the new stadium. But we're into the fourth inning now, and there's a little bit of nervousness kind of sweeping over the stadium here. 2-0 the count. If I'm picking somebody, can pick in somebody to lead off an inning to start a rally. It's Riley Boone. I'll tell you that much. Mm. Great call, top of the zone. Time and time again, she's been such a good spark plug for them. She knows how to lay down the bunt. She knows how to get a hit. She knows how to create energy on the bases and draw their attention away from the batter. Three and one. Second in the order in average, 441 senior at the plate. Between her and Pickering, the freshman, tearing it up. And it's through. On to third goes Boone, and they're on the corners. Nope, into second goes Hanson, second and third. Nobody out. How about the hustle by Riley Boone? I mean, we just talked about her being a spark plug. The speed to be able on the fly, on the run, be able to get used to, okay, this is bobbled. The outfielder, she was deep. She was respecting the power of Kenzie Hansen. We just go ahead and leg it out. We push the limits a little bit. We need these runs here. And the Red Hawks want to talk it over. Patty Gasso will use this opportunity to visit with her troops as well. Tying runs in scoring position. Alina Torres will be the batter. 
Here's what I can promise you. There's not a team in the nation that works on base running more than the University of Oklahoma. And I think it's a facet of our game that's not talked about enough. You just saw an element right there that makes or breaks a game. The ability to take an extra 60 feet when you're down two runs for Riley Boone to find her way on third base now. No outs on the board for Torres. That that is elite softball. Yeah. That's an elite player. And Hanson too. I mean, yes. to, to anticipate she would do that and also take instead of first and second, it's second and third. Torres flied out to center field first at bat. Just off the outside corner. I mean, we're deep into the fourth inning, and Oklahoma is still not twice through the lineup. That is rare for this offensive powerhouse. But what they have done this inning is say, okay, let's talk, let's make those adjustments. Batter to batter, we can't waste these innings anymore waiting until our next at bat. Let's go batter to batter, let's go pitch to pitch, make faster adjustments. Grounded to the right side. That'll score a run. And on to third goes Hanson. RBI for Torres makes it 3-2. to two. That's only possible with Riley Boone being the base runner that she is. That RBI is only possible by focusing on base running. That's the power of speed. That's the power of aggressiveness. And that can be the difference in a ball game. Sydney Sanders. Tying run now at third. Sanders walked her first at bat. I feel a home run. Too early to call that. We're about to find out. <laughs> I was about to say, this pitch? I'll get back to you in about five minutes. I love when people call home runs. I, I just feel it. I feel it. Instinct. Sanders has two on the year. One ball and two strikes. Oh, a two strike? That's got to be worth two double. Strike homer. Double points for double Aaron. Double points for me. <laughs> keep a tally board up here all weekend. <laughs> Top of the order on deck. And a big punch out for Andy Jarvis. Big strikeout for Jarvis, now completing the second time through the order. You gotta look different when you're facing a team like Oklahoma. You can't throw the same stuff two times through. And she's looked good. She's managed one of the toughest, if not the toughest, offense in the nation. Just the second strikeout today for Jarvis. But it came at a big time. Has not yet retired Jada Coleman. Coleman doubled and scored in the first, walked in the second. Tying run at third here. Going in. Outside corner called strike. A good pitch and a good take. I wouldn't swing at that either. This point in the count. But a great pitcher's pitch. It's a great pitcher's pitch. It's just not one that Jada can handle. Fly ball center field. And that'll end the inning. The Sooners get one, but only one. And we go to the fifth in Norman. Opening day at Love's Field by a massive OU softball fan, in fact. I'm sure many of you saw the video of the team celebrating after last year's national championship at his restaurant, singing with him up on stage. A real sad loss for so many country music fans, people around the world, and especially those in Sooner Nation. Jenna Golem Besky leads off the fifth inning for Miami, and it's an 0-2 count. So Carly Keeney in the circle. Tough loss for this team. Celebrated a lot of national championships with Toby, an awesome man. A bold life, a great family.
Which gas has close up his wife. Beyond just softball, Toby was deeply involved in OU athletics. Yep. Seen him a lot on the sidelines in football games. Just a, a heart for the Sooners, I can tell you that. Without a doubt. Somebody who loved to give, who loved to help others. I mean, it's a legacy. Swing and a miss. First strikeout for Keeney. And there's one out in the Miami fifth. Second batter faced, paints the outside corner. That is her M.O. She will live in the river. She'll clip the corners of the strike zone. Carly Spade was the first troublemaker of the day. Two run homer back in the first. Put the Red Hawks in front. They have never trailed. She's one for two. Nine home runs on the year. As a team now, Miami has hit 36. That's 14 more than Oklahoma's hit this year in three fewer games. This one popped up to left. That's Riley Boone to away. We talked about how they matched up last year in Oklahoma. I mean, they run ruled them. They scored a lot of runs off of them. But one thing Coach Gasso always talks about is she loves to face teams who want to get better. And I think as it's shown here in this game, Miami, Ohio, they want to get better. They have improved last year to this year. They're not nervous. They're not scared. They're coming in and they're swinging, taking good hacks. They're pitching. It was great. And that ball's hit well into right center field, but Jada Coleman is under it and is a quick one, two, three, fifth inning for Carly Keeney. Bottom five we go in Norman. Of Ohio, a regional finalist a year ago in the NCAA tournament. Pickering leads off for Oklahoma. Waves at the first offering from Addie Jarvis. Six championships in 10 years is pretty jaw-dropping. <laughs> Bunny. Jarvis makes the play. It'll be Alyssa Brito. Brito two for two, a pair of singles today. She's got two of the five base knocks for Patty Gasso's team. Shadow's now starting to encroach on the home plate area. Liberty will be here. Five o'clock tonight for game two of the weekend against Oklahoma. They are 1-0. They've already posted a victory today over at Marita Hines Field. 10-6 win over Tulsa. It feels like the old Big 12 tournament where you're playing on two fields, you play over <laughs> here and over there, and you go back and forth. Running around. Mm -hmm. Brito! A shot for history. We're tied. The first Sooner home run at Love's Field. And it belongs to Alyssa Brito. Bam. It was just a little early, OK? <laughs> but I felt this. It was in my bones. It was brewing. It was brewing. That was a shot. The exit speed, I'd love to know. The velo off the barrel, because this got out in a hurry. She knew right away. You could see her reaction. I mean, look at this swing. It's just poetry. A little skip, and she's like, all right. I'll take my jog around the bases. But I mean, what a time to make history for Oklahoma. First home run in Love Stadium, but tie it up. Get your team back into this game. It's later in the innings. And that'll chase Addie Jarvis. We've got a pitching change for Miami. We've got a new ball game. In it will go in the record books. I can promise you, though, that this is not what she's thinking about in this moment. What this home run meant to Alyssa Brito was tying up this ball game. They've been trailing now for four innings and to finally here in the fifth, even up the playing field. And they'll face a new pitcher now. Right-hander Ashley Hitchcock. Hitchcock 
Fifth year senior out of Perrysburg, Ohio. Rutgers transfer, one of the three newcomers in the circle this year for the Red Hawks. Tiara Jennings will be her first batter. How do you do? Ball one outside. Still a curveball, but it's lower. She'll break the ball away from a righty, but she'll be a little bit more at the knees. I think that this is still a timing adjustment for OU. Seeing the ball deep in the stance, not being early. There's the off speed in. Okay, we may we may see a different look here. Now the third time through the order. Talk about quick adjustments, being able, okay, they got the hit, let's adjust right away. Mm. Great call. Patty Gasso didn't like the call down in the third base coaching box. Her hands immediately went in the air. Two. That was the pitch. That was the one. <laughs> Middle in. A little bit of a smile from Hitchcock as she turned around because she knew. She got away with it. Yeah. Full count. If you missed it moments ago, uh, Aaron Miller tried to claim the calling of a home run. <laughs> Four batters after she called a home run. Listen. Really bold move. Here's the payoff. None of you and else are risking it up here. At least I'm playing. Right. That's true. <laughs> At least I'm in the <laughs> ring fighting. That's right. You can't hit a homer if you don't swing. <laughs> Aaron's taking cuts. All right. So if I say there's going to be a home run this batter yeah. and I, I, anytime next, today, next home yeah. run, I, I get to claim. That's exactly how All it right. Works. There's going to be a home run. <laughs> Pinch runner here for the Sooners as T.R.A. Jennings has worked a one out walk. Maya Bland will run it first. Ella Parker, the batter, he's got an RBI today back in the first. Oklahoma looking for their first lead now today. Now Bland's got wheels, four stolen bases on the air. Four for four in attempts. That's a strike. By the way, the stolen base in the fourth inning for Kate Kobayashi of Miami. The first allowed all season by Oklahoma and Kinsey Hansen. And that then explains why Coach Gasso hops out of the dugout to yeah, challenge that call. Right. <laughs> it's because it's so rare. It never happens. Oklahoma running is 19 for 20 on the year. One and two to count. Freshman DP Ella Parker. Yeah. Only one play, and it's at first base. Second out of the inning. Into scoring position goes Bland, and Riley Boone will be the hitter. Exchange. Talk about last inning. She came up, got the bunt, got another run across the board. Smart base running, but we've seen her this preseason. She's come through clutch for Oklahoma. She's had those hits. She's not going to have the home runs, but she's going to have those deep gap shots. She's going to have those timely swings, those balls that just drop where no one is. That is what she does best. A lot of speed on second. That would be great for Oklahoma. Center field right in the tracks of Kobayashi, and the inning is over. The home run, though, has tied it up off the bat of Alyssa Br Oh, for He's two today. Bachelor, whenever you have softball, I mean, this drama, it's gold. Look what I found. Nice play by Keeney. One away. Keeney does it well. <laughs> she fields her position well. This is a pitcher that uses her defense, so no surprise. Protects the circle. This is the look what I found, I think, situation. <laughs>
two hits today for Miami. They were back to back in the first inning and they both left the yard. Reagan Bartholomew has struck out twice as she sends that one into the crowd. Nice <laughs> play by a fan. It got a cheer. I believe that's Eddie. Eddie Radosevich makes the play. Look at him. How fitting. Let's give the man the name he deserves because that is the seconds of. We'll see this on Twitter. I hope you know this. <laughs> we'll see that replay on Twitter. His five seconds of fame. Exactly. Give him the fame he needs. Nothing if not humble. Exactly. <laughs> Eddie Radosevich. Exactly. I think he just tried to hide that ball. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of kids around there asking for it, and Eddie's going to stick it in his back pocket. Look, I see it. I look at him. <laughs> Swing and a miss, two away. Let's talk about these shadows. As we first look at the replay. I mean, that's a dirty pitch. <laughs> right below the knees, tight on that corner. Carla Keeney, she's carving her up. But yeah, those shadows. This is new, right? It is new to Oklahoma. Rita Hines, they, there was no overhang, there was no overhead. Didn't have to deal with the shadows as the sun was setting overhead midday. Now you're starting to see it. It's creeping up on that third baseline. And probably by the end of this game, beginning of the next one, you'll see it halfway between the batter's box and pitcher's mound. I'll tell you who it's affecting the most right now is Kinsey Hansen. I mean, that, that shadow is almost right over home plate. You've got a pinch hitter here, Haley Adkins. Batting with two outs and nobody on. Adkins 0 for 2 on the year. Ball and a strike. Yeah, right now that ball is in the sunlight all the way to home plate. But over the next little while, that's not going to be the case. It's going to go from sunlight to shadows, and it's going to make it tough on those hitters both ways. And that's not abnormal necessarily in this sport, but it is for an OU home game. Has not been the case until today. Typically, Oklahoma only has to deal with that in conference against Baylor. It's the only stadium that really draws that shadow. And skips to the backstop. Three and one the count. Tell you what, though, I've loved how Keeney has come in taking control, taking command of this game, and she has attacked the zone constantly. That's something that we said, okay, Nicole made great pitcher, but we're missing that a little bit from her today. Keeney has picked up where she left off, kind of picked up her fellow battery mate, and said, I got you. Let's pound the zone. Let's get back in this game. Let's give a little bit of energy and fire to our team. It's a two-out walk. That's number six issued today by OU pitching. Seventh free back, a hit by pitch and yep. a mix there as well. That's rare for Oklahoma. And I, every single conversation I've had, Toby, with this coaching staff, pitching has been the star of the show. Oh my God, pitching's amazing. Where we've fallen short in other areas, the pitching has really kept us afloat. We've been so sharp as a staff. The bullpen looks amazing. That has been a little bit of the uh, the slow burn, I think, here at home, home opener. Maddie Banks re-enters the run at first base. The batter is Kate Kobayashi. She was able to hold up on that first offering on the appeal. Kobayashi's been up twice on twice today. She was hit by a pitch in the second. Worked the walk and stole a base in the fourth. Eight-hole hitter here. Virginia Tech transfer, and she's ahead in the count 2-0. I mean, to your point, Aaron, you talked about, okay, we want May to have this challenge. I think it's good for this offense to have this challenge as well. Pitcher, sometimes they're going to have bad games. How can you step up? What do you have to do to make it happen? Left field, ranging back, Riley Boone, got it. Inning over. We head to the bottom of the sixth tie game in Norman, Oklahoma, and Miami. Three and three game. We're all knotted up. Kinsey Hansen. Steps in. This is who I'd want to lead off. Your senior captain. Double. She hits a home run. Do I get to call it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, here I'm never going to lift this. Never, day. never. Yeah. Doubled last time up. One for two today. Ashley Hitchcock 
in the circle for Miami. And it's 2-0. Gasso, the hitting coach, always talks about breaking up the game and not trying to think of it as a seven-inning game, but many games win each inning, win the latter parts of this game. I think six and seven, those are championship innings. Doesn't matter what you did up until that point, how do you finish? And I think that's the challenge for Oklahoma here as they get into this last little bit. How do you finish? Did a great job. Chipping away, chipping away. You gotta pull ahead here. It's a four-pitch walk, and the go-ahead run is aboard. Big at bat. That's a win for Oklahoma right there. Lead off an inning, grab a walk. The game within the game. This is something that Oklahoma is known for. It's something that I can remember in my time at OU, having a whiteboard in the dugout and having these many challenges within seven innings, whether it's counting hard hits, whether it's counting walks, how many balls can you take? How deep can you get into an at-bat? There are so many little details that can help you gain control of your destiny within a ball game, within a matchup that a lot of the public doesn't see. It's on the inside, and I can promise you those games within the game are happening right here in a tie ball game. Pinch hitter Avery Hodge, sophomore out of Richmond, Texas. Three for 15 on the year. Squeezing at third base, anticipating a potential bunt here. She does. It's a good one. The play only play is the first. Out is the call. Sacrifice successful. Go ahead, run to second in the form of Kinsey Hansen. I mean, even with the anticipation of, okay, we got the pinch hitter. She's a slapper. She plays small ball. Let's scooch up. And that was well placed. And that's one thing that we've seen from Oklahoma today with their bunning game, their small ball. They're placing it really good. Almost had a bit of a miscommunication between third and pitcher. A good call by first base umpire, Riley Cobb. And the Sooners will go back to back pinch hitters. This is Riley Ludlam. Patty Gasso told you, Aaron, on Wednesday, yeah. I love Riley Ludlam. She said, I'm a big fan of this young lady. Flying under the radar. Furman transfer. This is a kid that loves to learn. She's a student of the game, a sponge. Coach Gasso talked endlessly about enjoying the opportunity to coach her, to teach again. The fact that this is a, a, an athlete that stepped into this program and wanted to elevate. Strike called. Ludlam, one home run on the year, hitting 353. She's had a lot of pinch hit situations. She's come through big time, a lot of gappers to score a run, to even up the run. She's been really reliable in that pinch hit spot. And that's a hard place to be, is to always be ready, always ready for your name called. And typically, when it is, the game's on the line. It's a really big moment. I think, I think it's the hardest, quote unquote, position to occupy on a team is to be that hitter that the coach dips into the well for first. That's Sludlum. To have the bat hot, to know that at any moment you can get pulled off the bench in a big opportunity such as this, the go-ahead run standing on second base, and be asked to execute. That is the hardest position, in my opinion, that you can occupy on a team. And she's done it well. Brief meeting between Hitchcock and Cummins. Top of the order on deck, Jada Coleman. One out in the inning. Here's the 3-1 to Ludlam. Up the middle it goes, base hit. They're going to wave home Hanson. Throw to the plate, not in time. And the Sooners lead it. Riley Ludlam delivers. You want to make a statement to the head coach, one of the best coaches in the nation, this is what you do. This is how you tell her, 
I want to be in the starting order. A tie ball game, a home opener. This is the fourth time she's been in this situation and has come through. She has been clutch in those situations. Time after time after time after time. There comes a point where, like you said, Coach, you can't ignore me. I'm right here. I'm consistent. Riley Ludlam, a round of applause as she heads to the dugout. Pinch runner. That is so big time. I have goosebumps. Lilio. You live for moments like that. Specifically thinking about Ludlam's story, right? She's transferring over. It's her first season at Oklahoma. And one of the things Coach Gasso told us is that she has her aunt. And the Sooners lead it. And a good reminder for those of you viewing at home, there does have to be enough evidence to overturn a call. Right there, I don't think there was to make a change. Well, we know the replay equipment works at Love's Field. It's got a good <laughs> testing today. <laughs> Still only one out, Jada Coleman. Quincy Lilio now the runner at first base. Coleman doubled and scored in her first at bat deep into the left field corner. She has since walked and flied out. Two and oh. After that hit, you could feel Oklahoma just shift. The energy in their dugout, the energy completely changed to not that they're done scoring runs, but they're ton, done chasing after this game, but a little bit less of running two, and now they're just running away with it. Fouled off the facade. Watch out, Patty. That's something new you got to worry about <laughs> down there. That one deflected back toward the third base box. Get on the swivel. First time Oklahoma has led in their own ballpark. We haven't had to say that in a few decades. <laughs> we waited for that mm. off-speed pitch. And Jada Coleman laughing at herself, I think, that she missed that one. I mean, that's a good battle right there. You're fouling off balls, you're fouling off balls, you're getting hard pitches. And all of a sudden, this slow floater comes in. To be able to keep your hands back enough to be able to foul that off, it's a great discipline. And that ball squirts away, and there goes Lilio to second. Full count to Coleman. Just foul. Now she is a highlight reel in the field, Jada Cole. Trying to do it at the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. Fly ball to right. Got a lot of that one. Go! Two-run homer, Jada Coleman, 6-3 OU. Jada Coleman battled, battled, battled. And that one was right in her wheelhouse. She took that one far. This one on that low half of the inside of the plate. And right away, that hand went up. She knew that one was out of the park. Jada Coleman not only defensively makes an impact in games, but offensively. How about somebody who can change the game with one swing, who has that spark, who has that energy. Also, I claim that home run as well, because no one else <laughs> called it. <laughs> Second home run of the year for Jada. Six unanswered for Oklahoma. 
Here's Pickering. Still only one out here in the sixth inning. And that ball is hit deep to right. See ya. Back to back. I mean, does it get anything better than this? The freshman, she follows up Jada Coleman, one of the best hitters for Oklahoma, with a monster swing. I mean, this one almost cleared the foul pole as it was going across. That was a monster bomb. And the emotions, the feeling as you're coming in to your team. I mean, look at those smiles. She'll face Alyssa Brito, who tied this game up with a home run in the fifth. Top three hitters in the OU order have all homered now today. Brito, three for three. That matches her jersey. Takes a strike. You're Miami, Ohio right now. You just want to get out of this inning. Whenever Oklahoma starts to score, things can snowball very quickly. So bringing in Reeves, trying to change up their timing, trying to adjust their look. They want to get quick outs. They want to get ground outs. We've seen their defense. They worked really well early on this game. So whenever they have plays, they made them, giving them a chance to get out of this inning. Off-speed pitch called strike. The only out in this inning is the sacrifice bunt by Avery Hodge. Rito and our home plate umpire Bill Gattuso having a conversation. Pulled foul. I haven't talked about the action clock. Is that what you said I'm supposed to call it? It Aaron? is called, yeah. I've, I've gotten corrected okay. a few times already. So you're on it. Action clock, not Count. pitch clock. There it is. It's counting down in center field. Uh, I would suffice it to say Patty Gasso, not a fan. <laughs> Putting Which it lightly. High. Full count. Ha it hasn't, as far as we've seen, been a factor today. No. Yet. It's interesting. She talked just about the pressure she feels with it. I, I haven't witnessed it. That's what's so interesting. You wouldn't know it feels like pressure to her. Golombeski and right. Second out of the inning. I gotta say, is is this game as we start to dwindle down to some final outs? What an honor this has been mm -hmm. to be on this call with you two, an alumni, both Mendez and I. Toby, you've had a long career here at Oklahoma. This is one of the cooler moments, if not the coolest moment, in my career working in television, and even just being an alumni of OU softball. And so I just want to address that I'm I'm blessed. And I feel lucky to be here. Definitely feeling is mutual. I agree. What a what a cool day. Well, honor to be associated with this first game in any way at this facility. And to be here when you called a home run four batters later. <laughs> a moment I'll never forget. Smashed up the middle. Tiara Jennings has her first hit today. I think I started the spark. Yeah. Since that okay. call, I can't argue Aaron Miller that. is actually the spark plug. I'm basically <laughs> in right. a jersey. Come on. I can't wait to hear your post-game press conference. <laughs> <laughs> you know who else will be there? Eddie. Eddie will also be there Eddie in that press conference. Uh, we, we've talked about Eddie enough. His head is getting too big. <laughs> Anna Core will be a pinch hitter here for Oklahoma. Limited action so far this year for Hannah. She's one for ten, has an RBI. Sophomore out of your Belinda, California. One of many Californians on this Sooner team. We got another game today. Scheduled for a 5 o'clock start, which is getting pretty close here. Foul ball back. We'll have it for you on ESPN+. 
the Liberty Flames. They have already posted a victory today. They won that one soundly. It's kind of nice for them to be able to get in, take care of business, rest up. Good looking pitch there. What's the between game routine? Food. Yes. You talking about it. the team or us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice play at short by Bartholomew, and the inning is over, but it's a big one. Four runs, back to back homers, and the Sooners are. To secure the first win here. Love's feel. What a day. I mean, it started early for Oklahoma. Had to be at their cages to warm up at 9 a.m. for a 2 o'clock game. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of emotion for many different reasons. And as this first game is starting to wind down, got to look back and be like, man, what a special day. Grounded to short. Tough play. Jennings. Not in time. Let's see if Patty Gasso wants him to take another look at this. That was a nice leg out by Parks, being able to know, okay, this is a slow roller. There's probably going to be multiple hops before it reaches Jennings. Right away, out of the box, she was head down, hands going. I got to tell you, I've been impressed with Miami, Ohio all day. Mm -hmm. The spark they came out with, the aggressiveness they've had at the plate, their defense has been solid. They're a well-coached team. This team came into the stadium ready to compete. Left center field, that ball smacked and that's gone. I mean, talk about competing right there. Another home run and they're right back in it. One run away. Back-to-back -back homers in the first. Didn't have another hit until here in the seventh. They go infield single, two-run homer. And you're right, Nicole, we've got a game. It's now 7-5. It's the fifth home run of the year for Allie Cummings, and we're starting to get in to the meat of this order. The power alley of the starting nine. Two-hole, six home runs. Three-hole spade hit her ninth home run back in the first inning. And Blaska in the four hole with five. I mean, this this is a gauntlet of power. As I was saying, Miami, Ohio came in here with their best stuff. They knew what this game was going to be. And they came out punching, swinging. Would have been real easy to be intimidated when they showed up today. That ball wow. is blasted. Wow. Straight away center field over everything. And it's a one run game. Jenna Golombeski, the fourth home run of the day for Miami. You have to tip your cap. You have to give respect where it's due. And right now, Miami, Ohio said never say die. We're not done. There's no outs on the board. I mean, their swings are so efficient in the zone. They get to the ball on plane quickly. And then that extension, it just continues to go and go and go and go. That's why you see so much power through the ball. So one, two, three, and four in their lineup has hit home runs today. Boy, that was fast, too. It went from 7-3 to 7-6 in the blink of an eye, and there is nobody out here in the seventh. Here's Carly Spade. She hit the two-run homer in the first. The nervousness is back at Love's Field. Outside. Coach Kieran Kumar at third, third season. Fourth year as head coach here at Miami Softball. Back to back to back and we're tied. Second home run today for Carly Spade. 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, look at that reaction as she came into home plate. She is over the moon right now. And look at the fans. 
Miami, Ohio, they have made an adjustment. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. Quick adjustments. This is the third inning for Carly Keeney and their ability to say, okay, we have struggles. What is our adjustment? And they come up and they hit hard ground ball, home run, home run. After OU scored four in the bottom of the sixth to take command, Miami has quickly scored four in the top of the seventh on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs to tie it again. And now it's S.J. Guerin in the circle. Lefty from Houston. She throws a lot of pitches all over the zone, but what her key is, what her plan of attack is, is to lull hitters and then speed them up. She's going to be a very efficient, I'm gonna spin through the zone, high rotation, not a ton of velocity, away, away, and then she'll come in and it'll feel like it's 70 miles an hour. That is her game plan as a pitcher. Center field, this will stay in the park. Coleman's there, one out. Man, what a game one in this place, huh? You know what? I, I know that a lot of people assumed what this ball game was going to be like opening day, right? Let's just, let's call a spade a spade. Can I tell you, though, as a softball fan, take my OU affiliation out of it. You live for games like this. You live for this. This is how our game gets better. This is how teams get better, getting tested like this late in games. And I'm just looking into Miami, Ohio's dugout and the communication between hitters to hitters on deck to, okay, let's let's make a game plan. Let's see, you see the charts are coming out. They're invested in this in the quick adjustment. Oklahoma, same thing. They saw Keeney get hit hard. Their adjustment, bring in SJ, slow him down. A ball and a strike to Buick, two and one. The game doesn't know. The game doesn't know what name is on the jersey. The game doesn't know what day it is. The game doesn't know what stadium we're sitting in. You got to come with your best stuff. And Miami, Ohio came with a lot of juice in the tank. Three and one. Four. Go ahead, run aboard for the Red Hawks. Well, we knew coming in, this team can hit home runs. Led the country in home runs per game, 34 of them in 11. They've added five more now today. 39 home runs in now 12 games this year. Slight work. And we're just now entering. Today starts the fourth week of softball season. They did all of that in such a short amount of time. Pinch runner for Miami is Logan Mueller. Do they try Kinsey Hansen again? Here's Bartholomew. Up and in, and the ball got away from Kinsey, and the go-ahead run advances to second. This is a pinch hitter, actually. Shelby Kunkel at the plate for Miami. This went tight in on the hands. Almost hits her. I mean, Pat barely misses the elbow. Hansen just lost sight of it. Also, with that shadow starting to creep over the plate. Strike call. Nice little off speed by SJ. Just mixing up those speeds. Goes hard in and then floats in the change. Kunkel, four for 11 on the year, has one homer. Little blooper toward third. Brito dives, can't quite get there. It's one and two, and the fan applauds the effort. Great effort by Brito. I mean, full extension, almost had it for a minute. This foul might as well go out.
You could tell a little different coloring. The area behind home plate and down the lines is turf. That gets all the or a lot of the wear and tear. So that foul area there is turf. The outfield is natural grass here. Off speed upstairs, two and two. That's right. She's been brought in situationally. Minimal innings, but she has been very, very effective whenever she's been brought in. For her, this is the biggest moment in her career that coach has said, all right, I'm calling your name. Get us out of this inning. Make it quick. It's all you. Big strikeout. Two away. From the left side is already an adjustment that Miami is going to have to make, seeing a different release point out of the circle. But this is the biggest adjustment I believe that they're going to have to see is the off speed, seeing the ball deep, battling late in counts. This is what SJ does so well. She pulls the string. She makes the ball dance. She shows a lot of speeds. Very hard to barrel up this arm. Hadley Parisian now, another pinch hitter for Miami, takes a ball low. Five for 13 on the year. Go ahead run at second. Two outs in the seventh. The Red Hawks have scored four to tie it. One and one. And again, it's that pitching style that SJ has done so well. Slow them down, slow them down, speed them up inside, or work that inside half, and then slow them down with that off speed. Interesting, Aaron and Nicole, that Miami goes back-to-back -back lefty pinch hitters against the lefty pitcher. I mean, it just depends on your hitters. I know me as a lefty, I loved hitting off of lefty pitchers. I saw it. I didn't have to look all the way across the body. It just depends on what your hitters like. As a coach, you know that. You know what they've done. You know their competitive spirit. You know what they've looked like day in and day out in practice. Over 4,500 trying to cheer on S.J. Guerin for the final out here in the seventh. And she'll need at least one more pitch. That ball just fouled. Eighth batter of this Miami seventh. Ohio hits 375 against left-handed pitchers. That's better than their average against right. So this is a decision I think that was made consciously, especially with pinch hitters coming off the bench, is that they know that they can hit from a lefty release point. 2-2. Two -two. Outside. Kate Kobayashi on deck. If Parisian can reach. Ooh, watch out. Man, this has been a battle this whole entire at bat. Talk about pinch hitters that we saw earlier on. Riley Ludlum came in off the bench, ready to go, got that big hit. See here, foul ball, foul ball, battle, battle, take that ball. He's ending this 500 average against lefty. Slow roll with the short. Jennings. Inning over. Miami. Wow. Four runs. Three homers. With a 67 game winning streak on the line. The three time defending national champions. And Miami of Ohio. Leading off the bottom of the seventh. Riley Boone. Again. This is who you want at the plate. 
A spark plug, she's done it already. The first three weeks. And we have seen Riley Boone all over the lineup. Lead off nine, six, she's been everywhere. It is Addie Jarvis back in the circle, ground ball, base hit. Winning run aboard. Second hit today for Boone. I admit, the first time I heard the crowd call out her name, I was like, what happened? Why are we booing? Why, why are they booing her doing something good? They're not booing. She's such a gamer. Ugh. They're booning. Called strike. I mean, we were talking during the break. This is what you live for. As an athlete, you love these kinds of games if you're any kind of competitor. I mean, this is a moment made for Kinsey Hansen, isn't it? Saw it last year. Yeah. But to that point, every at bat, every year, it's a new slate. Hit hard, but foul. One and two. Riley Boone two for two in stolen base attempts on the season. for these moments. You live for a captain, a super senior, a six-year to get a moment like this.